Hello and welcome to our talk on English literature at Ralph Allen. Uh, we're two thirds of the English literature team. I'm Mr. Daniel. And I'm Ms. Russell. So we're going to take you through the reasons why you should choose the best A-level course of English lit. So who should study English lit, Miss? Well, this is going to appeal to anyone who enjoys reading, as it says here, uh, thinking about how writers achieve their effects. Really important uh, that you enjoy discussing books and your ideas on books. So lots of our lessons are taken up with lots of discussion, probably even more so than GCSE. Uh, and finally, anyone who enjoys reading new and challenging books, um, because we have some great texts on our English literature course. I think the discussion is such a nice part, isn't it? It's such a friendly, open environment. And I'd say that's one of the biggest differences with English literature GCSE, that is, is greater discussion. Uh, so, what skills do you already have that are going to make you a good student? Well, as you can see, uh, you'll probably be reading texts from different centuries, different genres. You'll be discussing ideas. You'll be someone who enjoys annotating texts, I'm sure. You'll be interested in exploring social, historical and cultural details. You'll like presenting arguments and looking at things from different points of view. You'll be really keen to express your personal responses and you'll be someone who's able to work independently or as part of a group. Um, what will you do on the course? All sorts of things. Um, you'll develop and reinforce the skills that you are currently developing GCSE. So a lot of the skills we're already doing um, are a really good base for English literature study and you'll be developing those further. Um, you'll refine your own essay writing skills. Um, the really exciting part, I think, of the A-level course is the connections between texts. Um, a lot more um, comparing texts at A-level uh, than we have scope for at GCSE. Um, you'll improve your speaking and listening through lots of discussion in lessons. Um, the speaking and listening goes hand in hand, I think, with developing confidence in your own opinions. So if you can articulate your opinions in class, it strengthens your ability to express them in writing in your essays. Um, we, read a lovely, sorry, we read a lovely range of texts, uh, which we'll go into in a, in a minute. Um, you develop an awareness of the world around you, so context is still a very big part of the A-level course, more so than GCSE, and there are constant links, I think, with English literature and the sort of texts we do um, to the world around us and history and politics um, and things that are still happening. Um, and as I say, as we've said before, um, you're going to enjoy talking, discussing and analysing texts in a lot of detail. So what will lessons be like? We've touched upon it a little bit already, but they're definitely more informal and relaxed. So there's lots and lots of lively discussion. Quite often you would have read a chapter or a scene before you come to lesson and be armed with your opinions ready to share and discuss. Supportive and friendly atmosphere, and you'll get the chance to share your opinions and ideas about what you think is important about texts and we'll continue to get guidance on how to succeed at A level, of course. I'd just like to build on the supportive and friendly atmosphere. So it, it is generally very supportive. So um, we really want to encourage people to come up with their views. It's really not a case of a right view of a text. Um, and just as the same as at GCSE, all your views are valid um, and um, as long as you can support them on text. So we really want to encourage that personal response. That to independence of yeah. So, Miss, what do we study? So, what do we study? Uh, three uh, units. So, um, there's one coursework unit, which is now called an NEA, which stands for non examined assessment. That's worth 20%. And then you have two exam units, um, together worth 80%. Uh, so, they're on two different exam papers, much like uh, English Literature, GCSE, if you do EDUCAS. Um, on paper one, it's called Love Through the Ages. You study a fellow, a phenomenal Shakespeare play, a poetry anthology and also The Great Gatsby. On the uh, second paper, which is called Modern Times, or more Modern Text, you study Skirred Hill, which is a poetry collection by a poet called uh, Owen Shears. You study The Handmaid's Tale and A Street Car Named Desire. Uh, and those are the texts. I don't know if you've found more than those, sir. Well, oh. which is your favourite, Miss? Uh, my favourite has to be The Handmaid's Tale, uh, which I'm currently doing with uh, Year 13. Um, I think one thing that I've really realised with The Handmaid's Tale is how relevant it still is. It was written in 1985 um, and it is still extremely relevant today, particularly in view of American politics at the moment. So 
really, really interesting. And the students have so many um, links that they make to the context, which I wouldn't think of. Which So we had some really good discussions around those tales. Yeah, I remember a lesson I did a couple of years ago. People were wearing Handmaid's Tail outfits on Halloween. Oh, yes. And they were deciding whether that was appropriate or completely inappropriate. And also, in terms of the context, Margaret Atwood, of course, based almost everything on real life, didn't she? And yes. that's really interesting to explore. Um, a second set of texts, Miss. I mean, I, so what's your favourite set of those? Um, I, choosing between Skirred Hill and Streetcar is very difficult for me, but I think Streetcar just gets it. The amount that is in there and the way Tennessee Williams paints a picture of New Orleans back in the early 20th century, it's so vivid. And the journey that the characters go through is phenomenal. Anything to add, Miss, on those? Um, but do you like anyone from Street Car Men's Eye? That is interesting. Every single year that I read it, I go from liking a character to hating a character to then feeling sympathetic for them and back again and flipping through all the emotions. So, what will exam questions be like? Uh, so, fairly quickly, um, Section A uh, on the Shakespeare is a bit like your exploding extract question at GCSE. You have an extract from Othello, and you write about the extract in the wider play. Uh, then you have an unseen poetry question where you compare two unseen poems on the theme of love. Um, we do lots of practice at that, so it's nothing to be frightened of. And the last section is we compare the Great, Gap sorry, the Great Gatsby uh, with a poetry anthology, which is actually much shorter than the anthology you were going to do at GCSE. It's only 10 poems. They can really get to grips with that. And most students feel really confident and really enjoy those the opportunity to compare two such different texts. Um, and that's a three-hour exam, isn't it? Which seems like a long, long time, but of course will fly by. Um, and then the second uh, exam, the Modern Times paper, uh, you will study a prose, a poetry, and a drama text. And the really nice thing about this, which I don't think we've mentioned so far, is you get a copy of the text yes. in the exam hall. Unlike GCSE. Not your own copy that you've annotated, but you do have one there. So you don't have to be kind of cramming to remember quotes in quite the same way. Of course you do, but not quite the same way. So that exam is two and a half hours in its uh, yeah. So the NEA list. So the coursework, this is one of my favourite parts of the course. So um, it's called a comparative critical study. Um, one must be pre-1900. It's a lot more fun than that suggests. So you get to choose, that's why I love it, you choose what books you want to compare. One has to be from before 1900. Um, you can do both from before 1900 if you wish, but one has to. Um, obviously, um, we, the teachers, will guide you with that choice. Um, and if you're really stuck, we've got lots of suggestions from previous courseworks. Um, but people have compared things like, uh, you can do foreign novels, so people have compared things like uh, Dostoevsky's Crime and Punishment, um, people have done Madame Bovary, a French novel, um, as well as English novels. Um, so you get quite a lot of time in Year 13 to work on that. Uh, you come up with a question with our guidance, you write one draft, we give you some feedback, you write a second draft. Um, and a lot of students find that a really satisfying part of the course where you've got a little bit more freedom to explore the ideas and the texts that you're really interested in. And if anything's going to set you up for university style learning, yeah. the NEA is definitely yes, it is up there. that yes. complete independence. And you can choose the theme, the topic, it's so, it's so enjoyable. Yeah. Uh, so what are our strengths then? What are the, what's the, what are the strengths of English literature at Ralph Arm? Well, students consistently achieve or exceed their target grades. And we'll show you our grades, which are phenomenal in a moment. Uh, many, many students go on to study English-related courses at university, be it literature, language, journalism, all sorts. And the department is rated very highly indeed by Ofsted as well. Let's talk through our um, Our lovely results, obviously we're very proud of those. Um, I think you can see consistently high um, uh, results, um, particularly our A star to C, um, and virtually everyone gets their target rate all above, I should say. Um, and I think we've shown that consistently. So you'll be in safe hands. Yeah, I think that's really important to emphasise, definitely safe hands. But as we talked about earlier, 
just a lovely atmosphere yes. as well. Yeah. And that's supportive. And that helps to get these phenomenal results. So what could you go on to do? Well, uh, English literature is it's a blue chip A level, if you will. It is widely regarded by all universities and employees, uh, employers. It's it's a it's a gold standard, isn't it? Publishing, journalism, advertising, law, PR, human resources, teaching, and so many more. It is a versatile and adaptive A level. So how do you get on the course? How do you get on the course? Uh, so uh, by meeting the requirements. So in order to do English literature A level at Brown Family School, we need you to get a six uh, at um, GCSE English Literature. Um, to get into Brown Family Sixth Form, on, as a whole, you need at least four. Um, a levels at grade um, five or sorry, grade six or above, um, and clearly you need to really enjoy reading and writing about texts. Um, so we need some sort of demonstration of your enjoyment of reading and why to read and go on GCSE. It goes without saying, doesn't it? You're going to make the most of an English literature course. You need to be a reader, don't you? Yes. You need to enjoy yes. having your nose in a book. Because I'm sure many of you do. So. We'd just like to thank you for considering English Literature. It's an amazing course and you will have a lot of fun throughout yes. the two years, yes. as well as being assured that at the end of it, you will come out with a very worthwhile and very well respected A level as well. Yes, look forward to seeing you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Bye.